Hello, I am David W. Parker, and this is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL series, episode 36. We're going to be looking at rotating in three to, uh, two dimensional states today. So, in order to do this, we need to know a few different things. We need to know which axis we're rotating around. We need to know the direction of the rotation, as well as the angle. For two dimensional, we're going to rotate around the z axis, which is coming towards you. So, therefore, we only have to deal with the y axis and the x axis in terms of figuring things out. We're going to go counterclockwise, so around this way, and we're going to go b degrees. We're going to try to figure out what p prime is, which is the new point. In order to figure that out, you would know that uh, the, a p point is r cosine a, r sine a. So if you think about what that means, it means if this is our axis right here, and there's a value right here, you need to know the r, which is the radius, and the alpha, which is the degrees right here. And so you can now figure out what p prime is by adding that extra degrees of b, so a little bit more. And ultimately, this is what our uh, values end up like after doing some converting and uh, translation for some math. So I'm not going to explain that trigonometry right now, but you can go look that up on your own time if you'd like. So we know that we have p prime, which is equal to these values here. Z is staying the same because we are staying in that two-dimensional space. Going ahead and looking up here, we're going to have two different vertex shaders, and I'll explain why later. But other than that, everything is normal in here. So now we can look at this first vertex shader. And now we can see we have this cosine of b and sine of b. And we use the same equation from before, where we have the uh, x cosine of b minus the y sine of b, and then the x sine of b er, plus the y cosine of b. And those are those two formulas right here. So that's basically it in terms of what we need. Now we need to look at these uniforms and uh, see how we set them in JavaScript and send them over. Scrolling up to the top here, we have nothing unusual going on. The only difference is I have this uh, commented out vertex shader 2, which I'll show momentarily. Everything here is the same as the last episode, basically. Uh, we're just drawing out a triangle, a longer side here, shorter side here, so we can see how the rotation works. And we're going down here, and below render buffers, we're going to do our rotation here. Uh, you can do this stuff in the shader if you wanted to calculate it all here, but these are uniforms, and it doesn't change for all the vertices. So it's less going to be less efficient to calculate it for every single uh, pixel value um, every single time, and we can only pass it in once, and only compute it once in JavaScript. So that's why we're doing it here. So this is unrotated right now, but you can figure out what the, the degrees is in radians. So this is going to end up being pi times 0, so this is 0 rotation right now. And then that's the cosine and sine of b, which we'll be passing in with uniform locations uh, to the u cosine of b and sine of b. And so that's all we really need to do in order to convert this. So now let's say we want to rotate this up 90 degrees, so it's going to go counterclockwise. So this is going to go up this direction, and this is going to come down this direction. And if we go ahead and refresh this with 90 degrees set, you can now see that the longer side is at the top and the shorter side here. So we've now rotated this triangle 90 degrees counterclockwise around the z-axis. Now this is using individual var variables, and that's it's fine and all, but this is less efficient uh, on memory and probably timing as well. So what we could do is we can comment this out, and we can use a single variable for both of these. Uh, cosine b, sine b, and then send both of these in like we would on a uh, something else that has a 4f or whatever. Um, and now let's go ahead and comment these guys out and use the second uh, vertex shader. So this one has a vec2 now that are going to be float values sent in. And now we have the exact same formula once again, but we're going to have dot x and dot y uh, to represent the first and second values that are passed in. Everything else about this is the exact same. So it's very, very uh, easy to see that it works that way too. So you can save yourself some uh, memory and make things a little bit faster by sending in a single variable as well. Um, that's it for this episode, talking about 2D rotation. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please subscribe, uh, upvote the video, uh, share on social media if you will, and go ahead and to programmingtil.com and sign up for my newsletter. Have a great one.